All right, so it's the conclusion time for the Kobo Ellipsa. And as usual, let's start with the cons. The first one is, for me, the overall writing experience. And it boils down to three things as far as I'm concerned. The first negative thing for the not so good writing experience is currently the writing latency. Now I've talked at length about this, so you can do, rewind the back to writing experience at the Desta chapter to check out what I mean. But generally speaking, it is not uh, where it should be, especially not with this uh, display panel, which I firmly believe is capable of so much more and really, really good performance. So I think that the notebook implementation is not making the best out of the hardware that it has currently. And hopefully, we'll have the repeat and see the repeat of the situation where Quirk Logic was able to literally go from the last to almost the top position of the uh, writing latency speed desta top list. The second thing is the pen. Um, while it's beautifully built and well balanced and for an active pen, they really did an excellent work. The nib, the plastic hard nib, the inability to actually change it to a nib type that we like or uh, absence of felt nibs, something a little bit softer and more comfortable. And the clackiness, the constant clackiness is just really not a comfortable thing to uh, constantly listen to. And of course, the pressure sensitivity is not good at all. So what good is of having 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity when you're not able to utilize even half of it? So those things combined, a little bit of other things, but those three main things combined are simply, um, yeah, the, the, the writing experience is not as good as I believe it can be on this device, with a little bit of fix-ups and tweaks and uh, better nibs. Now, don't get me wrong, the writing experience and capability of Kobo Ellipsa is by no means bad. It's just okay. So it's not great, it's not bad, it's okay. The, the reason why I'm criticizing it is that the, the device is clearly capable of a lot more and just okay is not enough for it. It can do a lot more and it should do a lot more. Second con for me is the um, uh, completely absurd choice that we don't have the ability to annotate and highlight words or paragraphs in documents the same way that we can on EPUBs. I have absolutely zero uh, yeah, understanding why that would be so, especially because everything functions exactly the same. We have a very limited number of templates, only four. So grid, line, dot, and blank, if you can call blank a template, so realistically just three templates. Um, but we also lack the option of adding our own customized templates. Hence, I wasn't able to test out and measure the distance of the tape from the screen. So it's roughly around 1.1 units, so pretty much exactly the same like you have on the books devices, if I need to gauge it. Uh, but that's just eyeballing it. That's not a measure, and it's not a measure because I wasn't able to do it, because we don't... Goddamn mosquito. Where was I? Uh, yeah, because I wasn't able to load up a custom template. So uh, yeah, you can't have both a really limited number of templates and not allow users to add their own custom templates. That's just a no-no. It is not possible to search content of the notebooks. Now, I can understand that for the basic notebooks because they're basic, but you can't even search the advanced notebooks, which basically automatically convert everything to text when you export to uh, two out of three offered formats. So by default, obviously the advanced notebook is converting everything to text, yet you are unable to search the content of it. It's just a little bit puzzling. Uh, the cover, but as I said, it's a complete miss. It makes sense only as a desktop docking station, nothing else. And finally, no dual color front light. So no amber color on the front light. So that is a negative as far as I'm concerned, simply because you do need it for the nighttime reading. That being said, it's not an all the way negative thing because you do have that dark mode. And to be quite honest, if you're reading in dark mode and very low front light intensity, then it 
doesn't matter then it's actually looking very very nicely and the amount of white pixels or the glowiness that you see is very very low so uh, yeah it's not a replacement for the amber light but it definitely helps with the nighttime reading you have the dark mode so that's okay now on to the pros that screen it's absolutely fantastic the the refresh rate i'm really impressed with the speed of full screen refresh i think it shows tremendous potential that still needs to be utilized uh, but moreover than anything else is the picture quality the sharpness the colors no banding how it's actually dealing with the the grayscale and everything it's just a lot better and a lot more pleasing to look at and use than any other e-paper device that i have used and I have used a lot of them. Kobo has an excellent reader for books. So EPUB reader capabilities, excellent. Coupled with the overdrive for renting books, it's really, really good. So this is a platform that I really do enjoy. I do enjoy the PDF capabilities, especially the ability to rotate and format automatically landscape or portrait. And with a little bit of tweaking, like that zoom state to kind of remain locked in the position as well, I believe that it can be tweaked to be extremely powerful and really good but even as such as it is now Kobo for reading books is one of my all-time favorite uh, platforms to use there's just something about it and you can still see that it's definitely predetermined it's it that's that's its main role and then it does all of these other things as well but yeah you can definitely see the origins of the device that it's First and foremost, it's coming from a reader side of things. I love the design of Kobo Ellipsa. Um, I love that it's not using metals. I love that it's not using glass. I just love the, the taper design, the color, how it feels in the hand, the ergonomics, the extended use of it, all of these things. It's not in your face, it's discreet, but really beautiful um, and, and subdued and um, it just, is a really really nice product to hold and use i i just love the design and build quality of it the magnetic snap on the side i like that quite a bit because as i said it's not a substitute and you shouldn't use it in your backpack or bag or something but on the desk as a holder for the pen works perfectly fine unmatched advanced notebook features that that's pretty much it there's there's it, there's no point in you know kind of counting all of those things just if you if you're interested go to the advanced uh, notebook uh, 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 chapter and rewatch it because it's just absolutely fantastic now is it perfect no but this is an early release so it needs to have some ironing out some bug fixes and all that kind of stuff but uh, as i've already said the core of it is outstanding and one of the rare things where the features are not gimmicks but they are actually real life usable things so that's something that i really really like and it's a huge selling point uh, of the kobo ellipsa as far as i'm concerned excellent dropbox integration throughout the whole device completely seamless integration i absolutely adore that fact overdrive extends the ability so that you can rent books and pocket is supposed to be really good when it works maybe i'm doing something wrong i don't know but once i get it to work it will definitely be a pro uh, simply because i love the ability that you can just send an article or a document or something uh yeah via pocket to your device and then when you get to the device it's just there but then again with the dropbox you can do the same thing it's just a little bit uh, different so it's not a huge downer for me that i can't get the pocket to work but i love the idea of pocket and i am determined to make it work so i hope that it works and once i make it work it will be a pro the most obvious pro of all is the price 399 dollars for the whole pack uh, albeit you know wasting money on this thing so hopefully we will get a 350 dollar package which is without the, the the cover and when you get just get the device and the pen and if that happens 
that is going to be an absolute freaking steal. Even as it is for $400 and if you just throw away that cover, it's still a really, really good deal even at that price. Kobo as a brand holds a very special place among e-paper users. As such, uh, certain expectations are definitely set with every new model that they put out to market. Now, Kobo Ellipsa has a very difficult role to fill because it's the first 10.3 inch that Kobo has ever released and it's the first note-taking uh, device that Kobo has produced and released. An additional difficulty that Kobo Ellipsa is facing is that it's entering a market that is already now overcrowded and right smack in the midst of a change with the emergence of the color panels and color devices. On the one hand, we already have a multitude of uh, high quality 10.3 inch monochromatic devices to choose from, some of which are full-fledged Android tablets uh, with the ability to run both Kobo and uh, uh, Kindle, for example, apps, so that you can use those libraries and many other functionalities. On the other hand, this year is particularly important one because we see the emergence of color e-paper devices of the 10.3 inch format as well. So it's basically like this, like uh, uh, Kobo Ellipsa has not only have to shove into an already overcrowded room that's full of contenders that are all dressed alike with the uh, uh, alike monochromatic suits and that are all auditioning and yelling and trying to get your attention and financial endorsement before the VIPs that have already ordered the Uber and they're on their way to that same room yet those VIPs are wearing super shiny color suits and not the old monochromatic suits. So everybody in that room is very much panicky and kind of like, oh, pick me, pick me, pick me. So Ellipsa needs to uh, somehow make its way into that room, uh, make its way towards the front of the room and somehow stand out from the crowd get your attention as a consumer and present itself as the most viable option for your needs and for your money. That's a tough job to do. However, despite the difficulties and the challenges that are associated with the first time type of product, because this is the first time this large and note-taking capable device for Kobo, I believe that Kobo Ellipsa has managed to do exactly that. And the reason is simple. It offers three very concrete things that no other contender has. Number one, best image quality, picture quality of any of the other monochromatic contenders, hands down. Unmatched advanced notebook capabilities and real world application, again, hands down. And then price to features and usability ratio completely outclasses the competition. If the price wasn't right, that would have been a downfall of the Kobo Ellipsa. But at $400 with the bundle, and if they are smart, they will rush out and offer a $350 or $340 deal without that stupid cover. They are gonna sell, excuse my language, buttloads of these. And they should sell a buttload of loads of these because for that price, that's an unbelievable value. My only gripe is this damn cover because it doesn't do anything and it's just wasted money and we're forced at the moment, just with the bundle, we're forced to buy with that cover. We need an option of buying uh, just the device and the pen separately, customizing your order from the June 24th. I really hope that they do that. If they do, that would be a very smart option for people because already now it has quite a bit of a margin until the next uh, device that's competitive. But if you add that and increase that margin by 50 bucks more, then it becomes an absolute no-brainer. And any and all um, worries or kind of uh, uh, limitations or, yeah, first-time things that the device has to go through and the platform has to go through that we've talked about, they will become very easy to accept because of that super aggressive price point. So, to summarize it, uh, Kobo Lipsa 
while it does have some of its faults and ha does have some of the limitations because it's a Kobo platform, so you can't have Kindle and all that kind of stuff, it's not going to be for everyone. But for everybody else who doesn't consider those things a deal breaker, uh, this is as close to a no-brainer as it gets, especially if they do that lower price point, then it becomes a fantastic deal. Even as it is with the $400 price mark, I think it's definitely worth it. No, it doesn't have the best writing experience and writing feel, but these things can be improved and the hardware itself, despite the active pen, has the potential to be way better and way faster. I just wish that they issue also the replacement nibs that are soft, soft felt replacement nibs. If they do that and all the st other stuff that I mentioned about the uh, brush types, the customizability of the sizes and uh, non-pressure sensitive brush, I believe that then this writing experience is gonna dramatically improve, especially when you improve the writing latency when they actually code it for and optimize the notebook to uh, utilize the e-ink screens. <clears throat> so yeah, Kobo Ellipsa. Would it be my default choice as a primarily note-taking device as it is right now? No, I wouldn't be too happy writing on it. But then again, even as it is, I believe that I would have to give it a very serious thought to kind of see does that writing feel deficiency? Does it really matter that much so that I miss out on the advanced notebook basically and the Dropbox integration, both of which are fantastic and an excellent, really excellent uh, ebook reader. If you're in the market to buy stuff, you are in a tough position because the overcrowded market of 10.3 uh, inch e paper devices, monochromatic ones, has just gotten a newest member and it's a very serious contender at a very aggressive price point. All right, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell. I haven't had a time to test out if MDO works on the Kobo Ellipsa simply because I was rushing to get this done before June 24th and I didn't have time to go through it all. Theoretically, it should work because the hyperlinks work and it should work really good because it has that jump back feature, but I will do this for the next week and then I'll make a video and then I'll show how it actually works or it doesn't work on the Kobo Ellipsa so that people can know because there was quite a few questions about that. I will also do a separate and dedicated video when I'm comparing the Kobo Ellipsa to Note Air, Remarkable and Supernote. So you know roughly what's what. No, I won't be showing some of the examples because you have all of the examples in all of my reviews and all that kind of stuff. Plus my arm is still healing. So I can't do that much work. These series of videos, this review has taken a lot out of me, but I wanted to, yeah, make it uh, in time. But that means that I'm going to have to take it a little bit easier for the next uh, couple of videos as well. So yes, there will be a comparison, but you can you know, go ahead and compare the footage of writing and all that kind of stuff. I'll give you the summary and you can do that other portion of work yourself of comparing what you like personally because all of the material is on the channel anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.